A typical uh, spring day here in Gothenburg illustrates quite well the challenges with solar energy, that some days we don't have so much uh, sun. For this reason we need to be able to store the energy and that's what we are trying to do with our research, to develop methods for solar energy storage. It isn't easy to store solar energy. There are different techniques under development. Solar batteries, imitating photosynthesis by splitting water, or using salts for phase transformation. Kasper moth Poulsen and his group at Chalmers in Gothenburg use chemical reactions to store the energy. So uh, we are trying to store uh, solar energy in uh, chemical bonds and molecules. So it's a uh, uh, isomerization reaction that means that the molecules change shape when you radiate uh, with light and then it uh, forms new chemical bonds then we have a high energy isomer that uh, we can store for a long time and then when we need the energy we can convert the isomer back to its original state and then it releases uh, energy in the form of heat. Isomers are molecules with the same chemical formula but with different chemical structures the solar energy is stored when double bonds break and single bonds are formed. To release the energy, a catalyst is added and the process is reversed. So we try to calculate the new target molecules in the computer, and then we go into the lab and synthesize them, and then we test if they work. The difficult part is to create the perfect molecule for storage. The molecule has to be able to absorb and store the solar energy efficiently and then release it when needed. And the molecule has to be stable enough to do it again and again. This is an example of one of our larger scale uh, test devices. So there's this uh, large mirror here that uh, reflects the light. So it's all the light is focused in this small glass tube. And in this small glass tube, the molecules are flowing through and uh, isomerized to store the solar energy. In this lab we are synthesizing the molecules we have designed. So here the process is to mix different species to hopefully we'll get the next generation molecule that is better at storing the solar energy. Here we have a machine that can measure how much energy our molecules are able to store. So we put a small amount of molecule in this very, very small aluminium pan and then we place it inside this instrument and then it uh, releases the energy and measures how much energy is stored in the molecule. Apart from the development of solar energy storage, the scientists are trying to increase the solar cell's absorption of the sunlight. The sun contains all the colors of light, but it's only the blue light that is attractive as a source of driving chemical reactions. So, research efforts are focusing on developing material that converts different kinds of photons into blue photons. In experiments, the absorption has improved by 130 percent, and the goal is to create a solid film to place on top of solar cells. Here, this is uh, the most normal thing, or like a quite known phenomenon to have this uh, red light. But then we have the upconversion uh, material here, and then you should see uh, green to blue. So we convert the green low energy photons into high energy blue photons. And then it looks like this. So you can see the blue photons here. So my dream is that some of the molecules we are making today will actually be used out in the real life for solar energy storage. Hopefully in five or 10 years we have a a system that can uh, efficiently store energy and uh, release it on demand.